Alpha 0, 0, 0, 7, turn right, heading 185, reduce speed 180 knots. 185 on the heading, 180 on the speed Gulf Air 007. Speed at 124, reduce speed 160 knots to 40 ME. Good morning YouTube, Matt here. Today we are going to be focusing on an aircraft I've not done before in my How to FSX series, the Aerosoft Airbus. Now today we'll be flying the 320 but you can apply this logic and way of doing things to the 321 and eventually the 318 and the 319 when that releases. Um, it's going to be a three part video because Doing everything in one video would probably take the best part of an hour and a half and an hour and a half's worth of footage is exceptionally large and it would take a lot of time to compile it and upload it all in one so I'm going to split it into three parts. So part one will be the planning, part two will be the setup from cold and dark uh, and then the pushback taxi takeoff climb to cruise etc and then part three will be the descent approach landing and parking up shut down we will be flying from belfast in the uk belfast international iko echo golf alpha alpha and we'll be heading uh, just a short flight down to liverpool echo golf golf papa the flight time around the region of about 25 35 minutes something like that shouldn't take too long so the first thing we need to do is get the route now lots of people always ask where do you get routes from there are a bunch of resources out there which you can get routes from and I will list them below the video but for this purpose just because I want it to be really simplistic so people aren't faffing around trying to get routes that won't work because they're outdated or something stupid like that I'm going to go for the most logical place which is a place called R Finder. now if you just google R finder free and then just click on it root finder you'll be presented with this kind of ancient looking page but still it's excellent you want to make sure that it uses the latest air rack cycle or the one that you have installed it goes all the way back as far as 511 that's a long time ago so if you haven't quite updated to 1309, then select 1308, etc. But I've used 1309 because I've updated it, so it's all good. So we're going for Belfast, which is Echo Golf Alpha Alpha. And we're heading to Liverpool. Uh, we are going to be cruising at flight level 200. Uh, so we'll use that. And if you are trying to figure out how to work out that flight level, then go and look up on Google. I'll link you to the Wikipedia article actually below about the semicircular rule and then you'll understand. Make sure SIDs are in use and STARS. We are on have equipped. Make sure you disable NAT tracks because why would we use a NAT track to go from Belfast to Liverpool? And the TACAN stuff has nothing to do with uh, where we're flying, so it's all good. Hit find route. So there we go, it's outputted the route for us. And it's saying because there are no SIDs from Belfast, we're just going to go direct to Lisbo after departure and then pick up the Lima 603 airway to a waypoint called Peapod or Pepod. And then we're going direct to the Isle of Man and then from there we'll take a start into Liverpool. So grab that route on copy and head over now to a website called Simroutes. I'll post the link below. Now, there is a lot of ways you can do what I'm about to do, which involve payware products. You can go and look for a compiler that will do this and an exporter that will do this, something like FS Build maybe. But really, all we want is to generate the route uh, and export it as a flight plan file or an FSX file. Um, or should I say an FSX flight plan file? Took me three attempts to say that. Anyway, that's what we need to do. So. You can either go and pay for something like FS Build, or if you're happy coming to this website every time you fly, then by all means do that. They both do the same thing. So, um, departure, Echo Golf Alpha Alpha. We just paste the uh, the route in from the previous page. There's no SID, and the arrival uh, is Liverpool. Now, we don't need to select a star here. There are stars there, 
but we don't need to because all we're after is the export of the flight plan and the only reason for that is so we can import it into active sky so if you just hit generate route and then it will load up with a page uh, and then all you need to do is grab the fsx flight plan and download it and you need to stick it in i'll show you now uh documents flight simulator x files and then just save it in there so that's that done you can get a bunch of information off this page if you really want to, but all I wanted from this page was specifically the FSX flight plan. So we can get rid of that. Just make sure this is still on copy, and uh, then we can close out of that. Now for the next part is Active Sky. Now the reason why Active Sky comes next is because the fuel planner, which is here on the left, the Aerosoft fuel planner, requires some data from Active Sky. So get the route first, then load the weather, then head over to your fuel planner, then load it into Flight Sim. I hope that makes sense. So to get the plan into Active Sky, if you just press Flight Plan, then Enter Plan, and then Import, and then just select the flight plan that you have just downloaded. Alternate ID is Manchester. We're cruising at flight level 200, so we're just 20,000 in. The cruise speed is irrelevant. Same for the climb rate and the descent rate. Tick, calculate top of climb and top of descent. Now, that is a kind of generalized figure because it doesn't know our aircraft weight and it doesn't know anything like that. It doesn't even know what aircraft we are. But just as a, a so we can get the upper winds, the cruise wind, we need to we need to check that. So when that's checked, just press process, and then what you will find is you get a kind of nav log, and then at each individual waypoint you get a bunch of data: wind direction, wind speed, the temperature. So what we need to do is we need to find the top of climb marker, which is this one, and we need to then take the wind and the temperature at that level. And we know that the top of climb is flight level 200 because that's what we added in as our cruise level. So if you just grab a notepad file, uh, that'll do, notepad++, plus plus, always a good little text editor. Uh, and then we can, oh God, then we can paste the route in. We can also type t uh, TOC 298 at nine and the temperature is minus 13. You just round it up or down dependent on the decimal value. If it's more than five round, you know, you get the point. Um, so that is the data that we need from Active Sky for the moment. So you can just go to the map viewer or something and on Active Sky, just check it's all loaded in. You can see there, if we zoom out a little bit, uh, that it's all there, it's all good. And we can see that actually, as we head over the Isle of Man, it's a bit crappy. And then it's a bit more crappy when we get into Liverpool. So now we need to get the fuel now, if you open up the Aerosoft Airbus X fuel planner, which you can do in the all programs, Aerosoft Airbus X, blah, 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 it will load in the uh, simple mode. You need to switch it to advanced mode. And with that, you need to make sure the units are in kilograms, unless you want to use pounds, but I'm using kilograms. And then enter your departing IKO in, which I've already done, which is Belfast, and then arrival, which is Liverpool. It will automatically calculate your distance, so don't worry about that. Make sure you've got flight level 200 plugged in. Taxi time, APU time, and the alternate distance, you can just work it out for yourself. Um, the, these values that I have in are fine. You can also go on Google Maps and find out how far you know, Airport A is from Airport B. I'm sure there's an easier way to do that, but just off the top of my head. Holding fuel is fine at 25 minutes. Same for contingency fuel at 15. Final reserve is fine at 800. Now, this is the wind speed at cruise. So it's 9 knots, and the, the direction of the wind is 298, and the temperature is 13. Now, on the left-hand side, it's a bit weird. I don't know why they didn't do the fuel and everything on the left. It doesn't matter. Um, if you just hit random a bunch of times, and as long as there are no red values in these fields here, so there's a red value, we couldn't use that because we'd be over the landing weight. That's not good. So just press it until it disappears. There we go. And then just reset the center of gravity, which is here at the bottom. We need to then take note of some values. So we need to take note of the takeoff weight, which is the green number kind of top right of those four values. Uh, which is 60061. And we also need to take note of the trim, which is bottom down here. So we just type trim 
and then we want it down 0 0.1 and you'll see why we need to take note of that in part two when we head over to the programming of the actual aircraft so that is the fuel and the weights done we can load it into Flight Sim when Flight Simulator is running. So if you just minimize it for now, and then when you get into the sim, just hit Load Fuel and Payload, and it will load it directly into Flight Sim when you load it up at the gate. Finally, to end part one is going to be the performance, the takeoff performance calculator. Now this is a really neat freeware tool. We all love freeware stuff. Um, a guy on AvSim uh, posted it ages ago i've had it for years and it is really really nice now we need to enter some data into this to get some accurate uh takeoff calculations or takeoff performance calculations so we are in kilograms which is what we have already set the aircraft type is an a320 the runway length, you can go and get that off the chart, but I know that it is 2,780 meters, which is in that one there. Airport elevation is less than 1,000 feet. The wind component we can grab from Active Sky. So if we just go on Weather Report, uncheck that, and then type EGAA, Enter. And here we go, Belfast, 260 degrees at 5 knots. It's runway 25. You can also see that on the charts. I'll put a link below for all the charts and stuff like that so you're not lost. Um, so that means that we have a headwind, and it's a really small headwind. It's it's between 0 and 5 knots. The temperature outside, as you can see, there is 17 degrees, so we'll just stick that in. Q&H is 1020, so we can stick that in there. Take off weight back to your notepad file is this figure here, so just copy and paste. And then the flap setting is always one unless you have some weird abnormal circumstances like you're doing a long call and your runway is tiny. That was a bit of an over-exaggeration, but you get the point. Anti-ice, well, the temperature, as we've just put in up here, is 17 degrees. So we don't need anti-ice. And there is no precipitation reported, as you can see on Active Sky here. So the runway condition is dry. Hit calculate takeoff speeds. There we go. So, we want to note down the flex temp, which is the assumed temperature which the engine will power to. We want to take note of V1, which is 130, VR, which is 137, and V2, which is 138. We will plug those values into the FMC, or the MCDU, if you're being really anal about the name of it, uh, when we get over into part two, um, when we program the aircraft itself. So, that is it. We've got the route. We've got the weather, we've got the performance, and you should have the charts because I posted the link below. That is us good to go. So join me in part two when we head over to the flight deck in a cold and dark state, and we embark on our journey to Liverpool.